Hey, this is Warren Redlick. I want to give you an update on the pod car. For those who aren't familiar with it, I am working on developing a single passenger self-driving electric vehicle, something I've been talking about for a while on my channel. And finally, I decided, well, no one else is going to make it, so I'm going to make it. I have been working on this and I have a brief update. I have more coming in the future, but I wanted to give you a brief update. Are you ready? Let's go. So what I've been doing is working with some engineers on chassis designs. They have three different engineers that are working on this. This is one of the designs right here that we're working on. This particular design actually includes some support for the passenger, the rider in the vehicle, some additional like roll cage type structure to keep the person safe. This uh, is, a, I think, a fairly complex structure. I, have, I can't really evaluate these structures myself, these designs myself. I have three different shops that I've talked to about building the prototypes. I'm going to bring the add cam stp files to the different shops and say here's what i've got which one do you think you can build easiest and at lowest cost and that will work so here's one of the designs right here let me show you a different one this one's a little bit different i think this one looks a little simpler but maybe sometimes too simple is misses some key details uh, we're getting closer you can see a steering mechanism by the rider's feet the basic idea is that the rider sits on top of the battery pack that the motor is in the back of the vehicle. The floor for where the rider's feet go is actually low, so it's relatively easy for the rider to step in. The rider steps in from the front rather than coming in from the side. Um, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, the goal here is to keep the vehicle lightweight, to make it simple to build, to make it low cost to build. Um, by making it smaller, it's about three feet or one meter wide. It's about two meters long. I want to get it down to six and a half feet so it fits in the back of Cybertruck. That would be kind of cool. Using sort of industry standard wheels and tires, the smallest I could find, trying to work, make that work. The goal is to have the vehicle weigh less, be simpler to build so it costs less to build. By weighing less, it means you need less electricity to move it. And then on top of that, because it's narrower, about a meter wide, because it's a little shorter, maybe four feet high, you know, 1.3 meters high, you have, and with other aspects of the design, you have a low frontal surface area, and then other aspects of the design, there's no doors and windows, it's just a clamshell opening, so the aerodynamics should be spectacular. It should be about one-third or one-quarter of the frontal surface area of the smallest regular car, and then the aerodynamic profile should be fantastic because there's no lips or other disturbances from windows and doors that can make it more. And then because it's a shell, it weighs less. So I think we're probably looking at a weight of the vehicle in the 400 to 500 pound range. And that's really key. That also means the tires last longer. If the tires last longer, then you have a lower cost per mile. The ultimate goal here is a low cost per mile of operation for the vehicle owner. And that translates to a low price per mile for riders. So Right now, Uber costs about $2.50 a mile. I think ultimately Tesla, robo-taxis, the Model 3 or Model Y, the battery day vehicle will get the price per mile to the rider down to maybe $0.25 cents a mile. That's Kathy Wood's forecast from ARK Invest. I think I can get this vehicle's cost per mile to the owner down to around a penny a mile and the price to a rider down to $0.05 cents a mile. And that really makes life better for the poor people in countries, for the middle class people in poor countries and poor people in moderately rich countries to be able to get around and save a few bucks. If I can save, if, if it saves me 20 bucks on a 100 mile ride, that doesn't make a big difference to me. But it saves a guy who lives on $2,000 a year. If you save him 20 bucks once a month, that's a game changer for his life. And that's the goal. Take that guy who lives on $2,000 a year in India and save him 20 bucks on a ride. It's gonna make a big difference to him. I get a lot of requests from people, oh, you should make it be able to tow, you should make it wheelchair accessible. I'm just trying to make a simple vehicle that will carry one person from point A to point B. That is about 80% of all trips. This is to me the optimal robo taxi. The Model 3 or the battery day vehicle are designed, we think the battery day vehicle is designed for four or five people. This vehicle is designed for one passenger, and that should make it the optimal vehicle for that normal trip of one person going from point A to point B. Now, this engineering work I've had done by other people has led me to believe, you know what, I think I've gone down a little bit the wrong path, and I've come up with my own design that's a little bit simpler and better. So this is the version that I just came up with today. 
The battery pack, instead of being in one row, is going to be in two rows. There's 10 batteries instead of six batteries. Those are 12 volt batteries in this design. Ultimately, it will be a battery pack of individual cells, but I designed it this way with 12 volt uh, batteries because it's easier to make that, get that together. And then motor in the back, I've chosen a more powerful motor. Thanks to one of my engineers, I realized you need a more powerful motor, not so much to go faster, but to be able to decelerate faster using regenerative braking. So that's a quick update. And then the business plan is that I will have engineering work done on the chassis, what we're doing now, hopefully by the end of this month. And then, of course, I'm going to revise it with my new engineering design. And we're going to do powertrain along with the next iteration of the engineering to put the battery pack together with the motor, try to get the length of the vehicle down to that six and a half feet goal, put that together. And then hopefully by spring, I should have a prototype built. The next step after the prototype built is I see where I am, how much I've spent, and how much I think it's going to cost to move forward to the next round because the initial prototype will not be ideal. It's just a, a proof of concept. Can we make something that works? Probably going to limit the speed of the initial prototype to maybe 15 miles an hour just to get a feel for what it's like to ride in it, how efficient is it really, and then what are the next steps to take it to the next level where we'll probably hire a, a full engineering team full time for at least three months, maybe six months to try to take it to that next level and get a real solid uh, close to production ready vehicle. Not really production ready, but close to production ready. Somewhere in there, I may do a crowdfunding round where I raise my guess is I try to raise five million dollars, which is the maximum for a crowdfunding round to try to take this project to the next level. Because if we get $5 million, then it's easy to put together an engineering team. You spend a million dollars for a first year. And in that first year, if we can really engineer the heck out of this thing and really have a nicely designed engineered vehicle, and we got $4 million left, and I'm not taking a paycheck, by the way. And we got $4 million left that we can put toward building, you know, the, the manufacturing side, maybe building 100 vehicles. And then work on the business model, which is where are we taking this? We're not building this for you to own a pod car. The idea is to build fleets so that we have fleets of robo taxis and go out and give people rides. And to work with probably Tesla, but maybe somebody else to supply the self-driving hardware and software so that we can make this work. And I kind of have in my mind a target country of maybe the Dominican Republic. Why the Dominican Republic? But as, a, as a test case, why the Dominican Republic? Because the Dominican Republic has a really high traffic fatality rate which is primarily, I believe, caused by drunk drivers hitting pedestrians. Cars hitting pedestrians is often fatal or one of the worst kinds of accidents. So can we get the drunk drivers to ride in these pod car robo-taxis instead of driving their cars? And the pod car robo-taxi will be safer than a drunk driver. And even if it hits somebody, it weighs so much less, it's much less likely to kill them. These are the, the ideas that I have that are sort of where we're heading. And I have other potential applications, obviously other countries, I think India, Egypt, Brazil, there's a lot of different places where this might work. But the idea is to get something going, to get a small fleet, maybe 100 vehicles, and go to a country and say, hey, we'd like to try this out in your country. And we give, literally, we'll be able to afford to give free rides to get the drunk drivers off the road and say the Dominican Republic. We'll give free rides, we'll put 100 of these pod car robo-taxis out there. Let's see if we can reduce your traffic fatality rate. And let's do a proof of concept of the network, of this robo-taxi network. This assumes that by the time we've produced 100 vehicles, there's a working self-driving software and hardware package that's good enough to do this, which I think Tesla will be there by the time we're ready, which, you know, I think we'll have a prototype in the spring of 2022. Hopefully we'll have 100 vehicles by the spring of 2023, maybe summer of 2023. And I'm hoping Tesla is ready. And if not Tesla, maybe somebody else. And ultimately, we can't go forward with this project until we have the self-driving hardware and software. So we're dependent on that. But if it's good enough, if it's better than drunk drivers in the Dominican Republic, I don't think that's a high bar to reach. It may already be good enough to beat drunk drivers in the Dominican Republic, right? Because their traffic fatality rate is so high. So that's the vision. If you like this idea, um, please let me know what you think. Put a comment on this video. Um, I do, if you're interested in investing generally, I have an investor email list. Also, my Patreon supporters, if you support the channel on Patreon. I'd like to thank the Vasa Law Firm in Sweden, all my Patreon supporters for helping the channel grow. Patreon supporters will get early notice of it. Subscribers to the Daily Lie will get early notice of it. I'm going to hit those audiences first with the crowdfunding round. 
And then after that, I'll be coming to the YouTube audience if I feel like we don't have enough to support the crowdfunding round with the first group. And honestly, I think that between the investor email list, it's probably going to be Patreon and the Daily Life first, and then the investor email list next. And after those three, my guess is the crowdfunding round is going to be filled up. But if not, I'll be reaching out to the YouTube audience as well. So I would appreciate it if you'd support this channel on Patreon. I'd appreciate it if you'd follow the Daily Lie and support and support the Daily Lie. If nothing else, follow the Daily Lie. Become a YouTube channel member. My YouTube channel members at the exclusive content level and higher, they will also get early notice of the crowdfunding round when that happens. I think the crowdfunding round is might be in 2023. It might not be in 2022. That depends on some other factors, like how much I think it's going to cost me to get to that next level and how much I want to put in. I pretty much want to self-fund it if I can. And I, I do want to say I have talked to a couple people at Tesla about this idea. I got reasonably positive support for the concept that I wouldn't be stepping on Tesla's toes by doing it. And that there's certainly a chance that Tesla would consider supplying self-driving hardware and software. So I haven't talked to Elon, but I talked to a couple other people inside Tesla, reasonably high ranked. I feel like it's promising. I think there's hope. So, uh, and I, I'm excited about this project. They do have another project, Solar Farm Apartments, which I'll talk about another time. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Please sign up for the email list. Please support the channel on Patreon. Please support the Daily Lie. Support this channel by becoming a member of the channel, ideally at the exclusive content level or above. Of course, you can also buy the t-shirts. The pod car will not be insanely gigantic. It will be insanely simplistic. And check out my book, Fair DUI, how we can prevent drunk driving deaths. And thank you so much for watching.